This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's Friday, June 19th, right now on Good Morning Indiana. Hundreds of alumni are calling on a local school district to change the way they handle racial injustice. I had a kindergarten teacher tell my mom that I behaved better when my hair is braided and not woolly. Working for you, we're looking at how they plan on getting their message across. Marion County will take the next step toward recovering from the coronavirus. We're live with what it means for your family as we head into the weekend. I want her to be able to look and say, this is my son. Like, he has his future. Bond of and the thread to success weaves through what happens in this place. We'll size up its commitment to making a difference. If you want something, a cause to be a part of, be a part of the solution. A family on a mission with an urgent call to help hundreds of Hoosier families. This morning, their drive to get the job done. Six o'clock here on your Friday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrick. Lauren Casey has the morning off, but our friend Rafael Sanchez is joining us now. TGIF, Rafael. Uh, good morning to you, Meredith. I want you to meet the new Good Morning Indiana mascot. This is the water bottle and Todd Clauston. We will need water <laughs> bottles throughout this weekend because it's going to be a hot one. Yeah, you know, today close to 90 degrees, Raphael. We haven't got to 90 so far this year, uh, but there's a good chance today, even better chance tomorrow. Not only do the temperatures go up, the humidity does as well. So you're exactly right. Important to stay very hydrated, uh, drink plenty of water over the coming days if you're going to be out and about, especially if you're going to be exercising. A live look uh, this morning from downtown off towards the east, and you can see there's a little bit of high thin cloud cover out there. We'll burn that off uh, pretty quickly here this morning. Sunrise officially hasn't even happened yet. Uh, that is at 617. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. We're at 67 in Indy, 64 in Bloomington, 59 in Crawfordsville. In Richmond, you're currently sitting at 63 degrees. So throughout the day today, there's a couple things going on. There's some high thin clouds making their way into the area right now. The sun, once it comes up over the horizon, should start to burn that off pretty quickly. But then those storms off to our west, they'll inch a little bit closer throughout the day and there's a little better potential of skies going partly cloudy this afternoon and can't completely rule out the chance of maybe a very 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 isolated downpour here and there in western locations but it's also in western locations where the temperatures are probably have a better chance of getting into the 90s about 91 in Lafayette 90 in Terre Haute slightly cooler but still above normal to the east with a high of 87 in Richmond. Maris. Todd, thank you. We're taking a live look right now at I-70 at Rural Street, Keystone Avenue. As you can see, a few cars heading in and out of the Circle City on your Friday morning. No issues right now to report. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and how it's impacting Hoosier families. The Indiana State Department of Health reports 15 new coronavirus deaths. So far, 2,304 Hoosiers have died from the virus. The state also confirms 584 new cases of COVID-19. That is the highest number of daily reported cases since late May. We are told a testing facility just got electronic reporting and that may account for the rise in today's cases. Since the pandemic began, 41,430 38 people in Indiana have been diagnosed with the virus. The time now is 6.03 here on Good Morning Indiana. And today, more businesses across Indianapolis will reopen as Marion County now enters stage four of the governor's reopening plan. Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with what you can expect. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Raphael. Entering stage four means several different types of businesses will be able to reopen here in Marion County. One of those is bars and nightclubs. Those can reopen today at 50% capacity. And a few of the establishments along Mass Avenue have already announced on social media that they're going to reopen their doors today, whether that is bar doors or just increasing capacity within their indoor dining at restaurants, which can also increase today. Many restaurants are already open with outdoor dining where the streets have closed. Closed. Now, indoor dining can be open at 75% capacity. Movie theaters, bowling alleys, live music venues, entertainment and tourism sites will all be allowed to operate at 50% capacity as well. That includes zoos and museums. Houses of worship can also increase the amount of people allowed inside, and public gatherings can increase to 250 people. Residents are st still strongly encouraged to utilize face coverings 
and practice social distancing in their daily life. And as Mayor Joe Hogsett said, that is, of course, especially for people who are 65 and older or have underlying health conditions. Those people should especially be practicing that social distancing and wearing face masks when possible. Now, as we go into stage five, that is expected to be on July 4th. There's just a couple changes that will come with that. One of those, of course, will be restaurants and bars will finally be able to reopen at full capacity. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. The State Department of Health does not list COVID-19 recoveries, but this morning a local hospital is honoring its surviving coronavirus patients with this colorful tribute. Having the COVID virus uh, is a serious health threat, uh, but uh, we have saved so many. Uh, they should not lose hope. Uh, they should be encouraged and know that our caregivers are here for them uh, to provide this care. That's the message Franciscan Health wants to send with this display. Each of these pinwheels, around 300 total, represent a COVID-19 patient who has been discharged from the hospital. One of the hospital's own knows what it's like to catch and recover from the virus. Emily Kornprobst is a nurse at Franciscan. She spent three weeks in quarantine after being diagnosed with COVID-19 in mid-March. But the health scare did not scare her away from getting back to the job she loves. I feel very hopeful. I feel very blessed to have survived the virus um, and then to be able to give back, um, to continue to give back and work in the emergency department, taking care of those patients that aren't as fortunate. The CEO of Franciscan Health is encouraging the community to continue wearing masks and social distance to avoid another COVID-19 patient surge. This morning, the top educators in Marion County are standing together against racism in their school districts. The school superintendents have declared their schools a no racism zone. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us now with more on this initiative. Kelsey, good morning. The superintendents in Marion County Schools have vowed to learn, apply, and teach anti-racism in all of their schools. That's 11 school districts coming together for one cause to end racism in schools. Schools will display no racism zone signs and parents will be given a list of resources to help them discuss racism with their students. The resources are available for children of every age posted on their website. Earlier this week, the districts posted a video pledging to stand together against racism. Change is required. Action is demanded. We stand in solidarity with our communities to build a more just and compassionate world to abolish racism, value social justice, and respect human dignity. The schools are reviewing district policies and employee trainings to make sure they can address racism, harassment, and discrimination in a meaningful way. Also tonight, the stadium lights at each school will be turned off for eight minutes and 46 seconds in honor of George Floyd, who was killed in Minneapolis. I'm Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. This morning, a central Indiana community is calling out racism where they learn. More than 1,400 former students in the West Lafayette School District sent the superintendent a letter calling for sweeping reforms. Their requests include adopting a black and people of color curriculum and employing more diverse educators and administrators. Becca Mims, one of the former students pushing for change, shared some of her experiences with RTV6. I had a kindergarten teacher tell my mom that I behaved better when my hair is braided and not woolly. Just a lot of microaggressions, you know, you, you talk white, you sound white, and I think, I think we all knew it was happening. There just weren't enough of us, people of color, people of different races, to sit down and say, hey, like, this is not appropriate. You don't feel like you belong, you don't feel like you are, like, wanted. You don't feel like anybody understands you. There's one black teacher, as far as I know. There was when I graduated, one black person in the faculty. So that isn't very inclusive whatsoever. Organizers hope the district adopts the proposed changes and inspires other schools to do the same. The West Lafayette Community School Corporation released a statement saying, quote, it has zero tolerance for racism and racial discrimination. We are committed to a well-rounded education for all and are proud of the opportunities that West Lafayette Schools affords to its students. We also believe a climate that fosters constant improvement should work in concert with our ability to listen to the needs of all of our students, end quote. The time now is 6.09 and there's a legal challenge to the use of tear gas and force used by police during the early days of the protests in downtown Indianapolis. Now this will all now be heard 
by a judge. A court will now decide whether those weapons violated the protesters' First Amendment rights. It's been three weeks since IMPD first used tear gas to break up protest against police brutality. The ACLU of Indiana has filed a lawsuit on behalf of individual protesters and Indy 10 Black Lives Matter. The federal lawsuit says that chemical irritants such as tear gas as well as rubber bullets and batons were used against the protesters on May the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. The ACLU says those weapons violated the protesters' First Amendment rights. When asked for comment, the city leaders say they cannot comment on pending litigation. Today marks the 155th anniversary of Juneteenth. It commemorates the day in 1865 when slaves in Texas learned they were free, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued. 47 states in Washington, D.C. celebrated as either a state holiday or observance. This week, the governors of Kentucky, New York, and Virginia announced proposals to further recognize Juneteenth, but it is not a federal holiday. A Texas woman has been fighting to make that happen for years, however, and for Opalie, it's personal. On Juneteenth, about 80 years ago, a mob of nearly 500 white supremacists tried to scare her family out of their home in Fort Worth, Texas. My father came with a gun and the police told him if he busted a cap that they would let the mob have us. The paper said the police said the crowd was so large they couldn't control them. But they told that house apart. They burned furniture. Opal, who is now 93 years old, has dedicated her life to education and activism. In 2016, she walked from Texas to D.C. to advocate for Juneteenth to become an official national holiday. Now, even a pandemic won't stop her. This year, she has plans for a socially distant celebration and a symbolic 2.5-mile walk. She says Juneteenth is about unity and recognizing freedom for all. Slaves weren't free on the 4th of July. So if it happened now, I would be as dead. If you would like to join Opal's cause, you can add your name to her petition on change.org. She is hoping to get a million signatures and send a message to Congress to act. A local organization giving young men and men more than shirts and ties. New at 615, how their new attire could be their first step to success. But first, let's check in with Todd Paulson with your Friday forecast. Hey, TK. Raphael, good morning to you. It's been a dry stretch of weather across central Indiana. In fact, 14 days in a row, we have not had measurable precipitation at the airport in Indianapolis. Today is likely going to be 15, but things will be changing as we progress throughout the weekend as it becomes a little more stormy. We'll talk all about it coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 612. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. It anchors you. The Rebound Indiana is our commitment to provide you with resources to help you get through the pandemic. And yesterday, our Lauren Casey showed us how the group Dress for Success empowers women throughout central Indiana. But on the flip side, there's a different group. It's called Success Wear. It helps men, young and older, have access to business attire, whether it's for internships or jobs. Now, every year, I get the chance to help college-bound students find clothing that will help them with their future success here in the Success Wear closet. Now, we videotaped this before COVID-19, so you won't see face masks or social distancing. But instead, you'll see a lot of shoes, smiles, and suits. That's 34, I get 38. For those racking their minds on how to get that job or internship, this is a step in the right direction. We'll try to help you out as best we can. From shoes to suits, success wear is the community's closet. Okay, yeah, it's reversible. Helping men find the perfect clothing combination to conquer that interview and claim their goal. All right, give me one second. Ascension St. Vincent has been behind this program since 2007. Workforce development and training and education and even professional attire can be a barrier to someone having access to health care. Israel Ayala is heading into his senior year at Warren Central. He sees himself in the medical field. I don't want to be taken as like, oh, it's just another teenager. So we want to look professional. We want to look like we know what we're doing even though we don't. Kyrell Allison will be a junior at Short Ridge High School. He's interested in architecture. Big dreams he shares with his mother. 
So this moment means a lot. I want her to be able to look and say, this is my son. Like, he has his future lined up for him. Like, I really want her to see that I want to be able to do something with my life when I get older. These young men are participating in the college prep program Upward Bound through IUPUI. And so it was fashionable at this time to acknowledge the before and the after. Man, we look good. Like this, this is this is what we do. Um, this is how we want to look. Like I love it. I just love seeing like just even the energy is around. It's just it's amazing. And we could feel the energy this morning. And you do look good, guys. The Upward Bound, Upward Bound program is working with about 127 students locally. Success wear could always use new or gently used clothing as donations or maybe a financial donation to support the program. So here's the call to action this morning. Due to COVID-19, Success Wear will resume accepting clothes on June the 30th. You can reach them two different ways, by phone or by email. You can email Success Wear at ascension.org or you can call 317-338-8509. Time to check your forecast and tie the day to drop the suit and find the swimsuit. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, Raphael. Uh, the pool, uh, lake, anywhere you can get to some water would be a great place to be. And if you do head out and you're wearing your swimsuit, uh, make sure you put on lots of sunscreen uh, because the UV index today is going to be very, very high. But temperatures will be climbing all the way up into the 90 degree range uh, later on this afternoon. So can we get to 90 degrees? We have not done it so far uh, this year for the city of Indianapolis. If we don't get there today, and it's going to be a close call, I do think we get there tomorrow. The humidity starts to climb, especially tomorrow as well. And then as we get into Father's Day, some storms are possible. So those are your weather headlines. Here's a live look for you in Bloomington uh, this morning. Some high thin clouds across the area and those should burn off pretty quickly. Sunrise officially happened just uh, two minutes ago at 617. We're at 67 in Indian Muncie, 64 in Bloomington here in southern locations. Bedford at 63 degrees. 65 is the current temperature in Columbus. One thing that's going to happen for everybody today is the temperatures are going to warm very, very quickly. Look at that noon temperature already up to 85 degrees and then highs today should get up to right around 89. And just like the past couple days, you will start to notice some high thin clouds starting to make their way into the area as we go into the afternoon. And so we'll go from mostly sunny to partly cloudy. The clouds that you see right now across central Indiana, those are the ones that are going to burn off very quickly once the sun gets higher above uh, the horizon. Now the storm's off to our west. They'll basically dive to our south and kind of weaken. It's not completely out of the question in far western locations that there could be just a pop up spot shower or two as we get into the peak heating of the day, but our air is really, really dry. So I think Truecast is actually maybe overdoing it just a little bit with the coverage of uh, the showers that you see there, but just know that it is a possibility, but do not let that hamper any plans that you may have this afternoon or this evening. Uh, you should be just fine. Temperatures this evening, very comfortable in the 80s. And then as we work our way into the day tomorrow, a couple degrees warmer up to 90 or low 90s across the area with skies that'll be part Partly cloudy and then Father's Day, we are looking at 88 to 89 degrees for your high temperature with better chances of storms. It's not a washout for Father's Day, uh, but just know that's the better chance of storms in the forecast over the course of the three day stretch being today through Sunday. So you may have to dodge those if you have a tea time with dad or you're grilling in the backyard. Monday and Tuesday, some scattered storms around as well. And then once the front goes through Tuesday evening, cooler, less humid air starts to work its way back into the forecast by the middle of next week. Todd, thank you. This morning, another step forward in the return to normal scene in the sports world. IndyCar announcing fans will be allowed at the July races at the Iowa Speedway. All previously purchased tickets for back-to-back -back races in the evenings of July 17th and 18th will be honored. Seating will be reassigned for all those currently holding tickets to follow social distancing guidelines. A limited number of remaining tickets will go on sale Friday, June 26th. Meredith, remember the census? Have you filled it out already? But if you haven't, could you be getting a call from the census? New at 627, we're breaking down how to know if the call you're getting is legit so you don't waste your money. A big good morning right now to Newcastle, Noblesville, and Nashville. You're watching Good Morning Indiana on this Friday right here on RTV6.
Kroger, fresh for everyone. It is now time to check what is trending at six. And Meredith, I think I found the way for you to, to actually pay for your father's Father's Day gift this weekend. Okay, what would that be? Because yeah, because of course he wants that Camaro, and so I know you were talking about money yesterday. So I want to take you to Washington State because I think they'll be able to afford it this way. You see, one town in Washington State has brought back a kind of currency not used since the Great Depression. Wood money. Oh. Tanino is dipping it to, to its emergency accounts <laughs> to give people in need up to $300 per month in wooden currency to spend in town. And pretty much every business in the community is accepting the wooden notes. Those businesses can redeem the currency for real dollars at City Hall or even sell them. So there you have it. Very you interesting. Have all those, those big bucks, you could, uh, you know, go chop down a tree and pay off that car. Yeah, I was going to say, hopefully that wooden money doesn't give you a splinter, right, Raphael? <laughs> a Southern California gym is addressing health concerns by thinking inside the box. They're putting each member inside a box, literally. Research shows workout classes can pose a major risk of infection, so the owners of Inspire South Bay Fitness in Redondo created plastic pods to ensure social distancing. Each pod is constructed of shower curtains and PVC pipes. They say the response to the effort has been overwhelmingly positive. That's pretty cool. Creativity at its best. We've seen a lot of that throughout this pandemic. Wow. And a big shout out to John Hesser. He's our hometown hero on this Friday. IPS named him the 2021 Teacher of the Year. He's a science teacher at Harshman Middle School. Congratulations to him and all of his fellow teachers. Now time to check your forecast with our very own TK. Good morning, sir. Uh, Raphael, good morning to you. Happy Friday uh, to everybody at home. It's going to be a warm one here across central Indiana. In fact, as we get you out the door, look how quickly the temperatures are going to start to climb across the area. We'll go from the upper 60s where we are at 8 a.m. already to 85 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour with skies that'll be mostly sunny. As far as high temperatures today, everybody's going to be very close to 90 degrees. Some of you will be above 90 degrees as we work our way into Lafayette as well as Terre Haute and then down to the south. Bloomington and Columbus will have a chance at 90 degrees with skies that'll start off mostly sunny, turn partly cloudy throughout the afternoon hours. The weekend is even warmer and more humid. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. By now, you hopefully know that if the IRS calls, it is almost always a scam call. But now some homeowners are getting calls from the census. Or are they? Working for you, John Mattery, shows how to see if it is legitimate so you don't waste your money. We've all been so conditioned to avoid unknown calls that if your phone rings and it says Census Bureau, it's probably a scam, right? Not necessarily. Amy Cheney's cell phone rang the other day. Um, when I get a call on my cell phone and it's not a recognized number, I don't answer it. Especially since there was no identifying name. So what did it show up as on your phone? It showed up as unknown, an unknown phone number. But it called again, and a third time. Finally, Amy answered and was told it was the U.S. Census Bureau. She was suspicious. As I know from your reports and lots of other places that the IRS does not call people and Social Security does not call people. And I thought, well, why would the Census Bureau be calling me? Normally, if you don't respond to the census mailing, and you should have received about three of them by now, the Bureau will send a census taker to your front door. But in this year of COVID, they're turning to phones instead. He explained that because of COVID-19, they are not able to do their door-to-door -door canvassing that they normally do, and so they are making phone calls to people to follow up on information. So how do you know if it's real? The Bureau explains a legitimate census caller will tell you to go to the census website. There you will find the exact number they are calling from. They will also never ask for your social security number or a credit card. At that point, go ahead and answer their questions, even if... It felt weird to have a, uh, a government uh, agency making a phone call to me. By the way, if you continue to ignore the mailer and the phone calls, a census worker will visit your door eventually, so don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. 
Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Friday morning, here's a look at your 6.30 news feed. A man from Newcastle and his girlfriend face murder and neglect charges in the death of the man's four-year-old son. Jacob Davis and Michelle Key arrested after police say the child died of dehydration and malnutrition. Police said the four-year-old weighed only 25 pounds at the time of his death. The mayor of Anderson says he supports body cameras and dash cameras for police after a video surfaced of an officer using a chokehold during an arrest. We first showed you this video Tuesday that was shared on social media. The incident happened Saturday, two days after the city announced police would not be allowed to use chokeholds to make an arrest. The officers involved are on administrative leave. The theaters are slowly starting to come back following the COVID-19 pandemic. The IMAX Theater at the Indiana State Museum says it will reopen next Friday, June the 26th, with social distancing regulations in place. Down in Franklin, the Historic Art Craft Theater is also coming back soon. The theater says it will reopen on July the 3rd. The featured film will be Space Jam. And on this Friday, we're jamming along here on RTV6, we hope, as we begin our Friday here in Good Morning Indiana. And now playing throughout the region, Meredith, a lot of heat. Yes, a lot of heat. <laughs> Todd Clausen is standing by this morning with just how hot it's going to get this weekend. Yeah, you know, I think today and tomorrow are probably right around 90 degrees, Meredith. Even Sunday, Father's Day, we're in the upper 80s. And not only is the temperature going to be coming up, unfortunately, uh, so is the humidity. It's been a pretty uh, dry week for us as far as any precipitation goes. But also with a lack of humidity, the atmosphere and the air has been very dry as well. So what do you need to grab before you go today? Well, this has not changed all week long. Sunglasses, sunscreen, and drink plenty of water throughout the day today. A live look from downtown to the north shows the beautiful sunrise taking place. Everybody currently in the 60s, but one thing you'll notice throughout the day today is the temperatures are quickly going to rise. And in fact, we should be in the mid 80s already by the noon hour and then highs will be near 90. So some high thin cloud cover out there that'll burn off with the sunshine. We'll turn it partly cloudy this afternoon as uh, some of the clouds from those storms off to our west start to make their way towards our area. And there is that temperature trend mid 80s by the noon hour. High temperatures anywhere from 87 to about 92 degrees today across central Indiana. We'll talk more about today's forecast and also look ahead to your Saturday and Father's Day coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. We are going to check in with traffic. This is I-65 at Keystone Avenue. Just a reminder that lanes in this area are shifted so that is something to be aware of as you hit the road this morning. Happening today, Marion County taking a step forward to stage four in Governor Holcomb's plan to reopen the Hoosier State. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning. Alyssa, this means more businesses there along Mass Ave can finally reopen. That's right, Meredith, and restaurants that have been open can allow more people inside of their establishments. Bars are able to reopen today at 50%. Bar seating is also allowed to reopen today at 50% in those restaurants that are already opening their doors. And along with that, restaurants can allow more people inside for that indoor dining up to 75% capacity. And a lot of restaurants here on Mass Avenue have already taken advantage of that outdoor seating with the street closure that's been in place, serving customers with that additional outdoor seating. Some even offering to-go cocktails under uh, until they can let more people inside their establishments. Along with restaurants and bar changes, stage four also means the reopening of zoos, museums, bowling alleys, movie theaters, all with limited capacity. Families can also return to playgrounds and retail stores and malls can open at full capacity for shoppers. Health officials say the ability for Marion County to enter the next stage is due to everyone playing their part. Our progress has occurred because the Marion County community has been following the preventative measures that we need in order to safeguard ourselves, our loved ones, our colleagues, and our friends. Large venues can also reopen today with social distancing guidelines and gatherings are now allowed to have up to 250 people. Stage five, which is the governor's final stage in the reopening plan for Indiana, that is set to take place on July 4th. And of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on if that date is going to change. There's not going to be a lot more additional changes as we hit that stage, but you will notice a few things. Additionally, more restaurants will be able to open 
open to full capacity. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Here is a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in Indiana. The State Department of Health confirmed 584 new cases. That is the highest number of daily reported cases since late May. But the health department says a testing facility recently added electronic reporting. It accounted for a dramatic rise in the number of tests and could also account for the rise in cases. 15 new deaths were also confirmed, bringing the death toll in the state to more than 2,300. The time now is 634 here on Good Morning Indiana. Marion County School superintendents say they're standing together against racism. Our Kelsey Anderson tells us they're declaring their schools a no racism zone. Kelsey, good morning. All 11 schools in Marion County want to address racism, harassment and discrimination and make all of the schools no racism zones. Schools will display no racism zone signs. They will review district policies and employee trainings to make sure they can address racism, harassment, and discrimination in a meaningful way. Earlier this week, the district posted a video pledging to stand together against racism. We will learn, apply, teach anti-racism with urgency and intentionality in our school communities. The result will be educational environments that better reflect and universally benefit the children we serve. Parents will be given a list of resources to help them discuss racism with their students. The resources are available for children of every age and they're posted on their websites. Also tonight, the stadium lights at each school will be turned off for eight minutes and 46 seconds in honor of George Floyd, who was killed in Minneapolis. I'm Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. And we continue to cover your schools this morning. More schools are releasing their plans to resume classes in the fall. In Morgan County, four public school districts say they will begin in-person classes as scheduled. That includes Martinsville, Mooresville, Eminence, and Monroe Gregg. They say all students and staff will be required to have a mask with them at all times. Water fountains will be used to fill water bottles only, and lunches will be adjusted to CDC guidelines. All field trips will also be suspended. Now, Brownsburg and Bloomington schools have already announced that they will return in the fall as well. People across the city continue to make their voices heard about racial injustice. Some who live in a neighborhood on the southwest side of Indianapolis hit the streets last night because of problems they say are happening in their own backyard. Those involved say parts of the city like Mars Hill are not very diverse. Elder Tyree Coleman organized the protest after he says an interracial couple moved into the area and received a less than warm welcome. This is happening still today, and it shouldn't happen. Um, you know, the, the, the police has called um, on them for false reasons. Um, they're constantly being harassed when they leave their home, um, come back to things broken and vandalized, and it just shouldn't happen. Others joined in to show support for the couple and others experiencing similar discrimination. Organizers say they are planning more protests in the area, possibly every week. A major health concern and the 13-year-old Indianapolis 8th grader behind the call to action. How one donation could help three people. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Day Road 37 in Fishers. The Black Lives Matter movement is not only focused on criminal justice reform, there is also an ongoing push to address health disparities. So for example, Meredith, sickle cell disease is a major health concern in the African American community. And this morning there's a desperate need for a solution. Mariah Roberts lives with sickle cell disease. The now 13 year old was diagnosed with the blood disorder three days after birth. Over time, she has undergone two blood transfusions. It's not like easy to live with, but I do, I do take medicine. Mariah has already written two books about the disease, which can cause many things like body aches to liver and heart issues. It can be managed through medicine, diet, and for some, they may need a blood transfusion. But the problem is that many African Americans don't donate blood and that is a major concern. There are very specific people who need blood from African Americans who carry, um, it's the RO blood type 
uh, that uh, is really needed for sickle cell patients with sickle cell who need blood therapy. One donation can save up to three people. The Martin Center in Indianapolis works with families facing sickle cell. More awareness and resources could help them connect with more people. Yes, Black Lives Matter, but black blood heals too. Mariah's parents and her siblings are doing their part as blood donors. As a father, as just as a human being that cares about other lives, um, it's, it seems like this is the thing to do. If you want something, a cause to be a part of, be a part of the solution. I want other people to know that don't be scared to donate. You heard Mariah, don't be scared to donate. It's estimated that about 1,400 people in Indiana are coping with sickle cell disease. That number may be on the low end. But this morning, the Roberts family has a call to action just for you. You see, Versity is hold, hosting a blood drive today from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Appointments are encouraged. Walk-ins are welcome. Face masks are required. This is happening at the Delaware Township Community Center located at 9094 East 131st Street in Fishers. Or to make it easy, easier, you can call 317-916-5150 to schedule an appointment. Don't be scared to donate. You heard it from Mariah. Now let's check in with Todd Clausen, who, who of course, no, we're not going to check with Todd Clausen. Let's go to Meredith. Good morning, <laughs> Meredith. Raphael, thank you. June 19th has always been an important day, but next we'll show you why this Juneteenth is getting extra attention this year. Now we're going to chat with Todd. <laughs> Well, yeah, Raphael, Meredith, it's going to be a great pool day for you here across central Indiana. If you have a pool or maybe go to a city pool or maybe you're heading to a lake or uh, just let the kids play in a stream across central Indiana or a creek. The temperatures are going to be climbing to near 90 degrees later on this afternoon. UV index, though, going to be very high, so make sure you have the sunscreen on it and drink plenty of water. We'll talk more about your extended forecast and look ahead to the Father's Day weekend and the first day of summer as well coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. The time now is 643. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes. And Keller, right now. Today marks Juneteenth, a day celebrating the end of slavery in the U.S. when Union soldiers arrived in Texas and told slaves of their emancipation. Because of the Black Lives Matter movement, more organizations are celebrating the holiday. That includes Fortune 500 companies like Uber, Target, JCPenney, Google, Twitter, and Nike. Sports leagues and teams like the Colts, the NFL, and NBA also announced that they are recognizing the day. General Motors is marking the day today by asking workers to stop for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That is the length of time a white Minneapolis police officer knelt on George Floyd's neck before he died. And tonight, tonight an ABC AB News special is looking at the legacy of Juneteenth. The program will exist examine the symbolism in the black community and the nation. A team of correspondents and the views Whoopi Goldberg will feature the celebrations across the country, as well as stories of overcoming injustice. The special Juneteenth, the celebration of overcoming, airs tonight at 8, right here on RTV6. Here at 647, Todd's taking a look at our Friday forecast. And Meredith, it's another dry day for us here across the area. The drought monitor, uh, that comes out every uh, Thursday, and you can see... Well, you can't really see behind me because it didn't pop up there, but now you can see on your screen uh, that much of central Indiana is in the, the yellow category, and that is the abnormally dry category. So that's the lowest category on the spectrum that you can kind of see on the top of the screen, but we really do need rainfall. We're running about an inch and a half below normal uh, for the month of June. So as we go throughout the next couple days, uh, I do think we bring some rain chances back into the forecast as we get into the day on Saturday. Uh, but the dry conditions and the temperatures kind of go hand in hand. And there's a lot of humidity around uh, to get the air temperature to warm to near 90 degrees. We have to heat all that moisture in the air, and that's harder to get to 90 degrees. But with the air being so dry, there will be the potential, I think, today and tomorrow to get that first 90 degree temperature here across central Indiana. So that's something we'll be on the lookout for. And tomorrow is also the first day of summer. The summer solstice officially at 443 tomorrow afternoon. 67 right now. In 
in Indy as well as Muncie, 64 in uh, Bloomington to the south. Spencer's at 62, as is uh, Greensburg. And throughout the day today, we'll see our temperatures warm pretty quickly. All the way into the mid-80s already by the noon hour, near 90 degrees by time we get to the 5 o'clock hour. Now, on the satellite radar picture, there's some high thin clouds out there right now, but they'll thin out off to our west. You notice these storms, most of these are going to dive down to the south, so you don't have to worry about those, but they may be just close enough later on this afternoon with the heat around that there could be an isolated body shower that pops up mainly in western locations. I think Truecast is overdoing it here uh, just a little bit across the area as far as the rainfall coverage will go, uh, but there will be that potential of going throughout the course of the afternoon hours uh, with a stray shower. If you did see it, it'd be very brief and also very light. Now tomorrow is another dry day. The humidity though will come up a little bit tomorrow. You'll notice that as our high temperature gets close uh, to 90 degrees. And then as we go forward in this forecast into the day on Sunday, on Father's Day, that's when we're going to start to bring in the chance of those uh, storms. They'll be pretty scattered in nature and mainly throughout the afternoon hours. So if you do have plans with that for Father's Day, you don't need to cancel the outdoor plans because it's possible you go throughout the entire day without a drop of rainfall. Uh, but you have to go knowing into these outdoor plans, knowing that there will be the chance of these storms. So you just need to be a little weather aware. Temperatures in the mid 80s. Sunday is pretty humid as well, so it's a little uncomfortable. And then those storm chances and the humidity sticks around for Monday and Tuesday before we return to cooler, a less humid air and plenty of sunshine for Wednesday and Thursday. Todd, thanks. Let's take a look down at the southeast side. This is I-465 at US 40 Washington Street. Traffic is moving just fine for your Friday morning. The Hollywood Walk of Fame is getting some new stars. The selection panel announced its new additions for 2021. They include stars for television, movies, and music. Among the list of this year's celebrities are actor Benedict Cumberbatch, singer Kelly Clarkson, singer and actress Jennifer Lewis, one of the stars of Blackish here on RTV6, and from Raphael's generation, hip hop stars Salt and Peppa. Hey. <laughs> A total of 35 <laughs> stars will be installed next year. I'm going to have to start playing that right now. Some of the songs may be a little inappropriate for morning television, yeah. but we'll see. <laughs> so listen, she retired from pro basketball two decades ago, but this former Indiana Fever Guard has more people watching her now than ever before. Next, it is time for Good News Friday, and we'll show you how she's setting the internet simply on fire. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. for you. It is time for Good News Friday, our weekly effort to focus on uplifting stories as we head into the weekend. Of course, this is a big one as it is Father's Day this Sunday for all dads across the country. So let's take you poolside. Meet this young man. 10-month-old Ethan Taylor is making quite a splash with his mom. He's learning how to swim and then look at his expression when he notices that his dad Ryan <gasps> is poolside. It's a smile and a way that every dad can appreciate. Oh, that is golden. Sweet. He's like, Dada's here. Oh, that's darling. <laughs> here is a retirement ceremony you will love. This is Toronto, an explosive detection canine with the TSA in Indianapolis. This is his last bag search ever and look at his reward what a good boy oh, Toronto has officially okay. retired from the TSA after more than eight years of service and even better news Raphael he was adopted yes. by his TSA handler Keith Gray and will spend his retirement at home with Gray and his family all right I Toronto. hope he got to look bring all that. those tennis balls home with him <laughs> 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 That's a lot to clean up. It a is. lot to clean up. If you live in Indianapolis, you know that the Indy Fever is among the number one teams of, across the city, the state, and the country. And if you know Tamika Catchings, she's going to appreciate that I'm holding this up. But I want to talk about an Indiana Fever player who played with the team during their first season, who right now has gone worldwide with her tricks on TikTok. Let's meet. Auntie Chantel. She, that's her name on social media. She's really Chantel Tremontaire. She teaches at Auburn University in Alabama. And this week, she hit 300,000 followers on TikTok after more people started sharing her trick shots and her commentary to go along with it as well, such as this one. Take a listen. Yeah, I got 
challenge for you. What? What? Old ball. Who? Drop ball. You go. Should have given me something hard. I'm gonna do it with a shoe off. Leave the car running, please, nephew. Keep it moving. I got you. I got you. Meredith, I'm sure that you could do that. But here's the thing. Auntie Chantel says she only posts videos of the shots that she makes on her first try. So I'm just wondering, hey. why does she no longer play for the fever? She still got it. Know, that is she's impressive. She's still amazing, right? She was amazing when she was here, and she's even more amazing now. So um, I couldn't even do that with a thousand tries. So no. good for her. <laughs> All right, Todd, is our forecast this weekend going to be a slam dunk for summertime and Father's Day? You know, for summertime, it is a slam dunk. It's going to be warm. The humidity is going to increase here over the weekend. But, uh, yeah, very, very impressive there uh, with those shots. I've seen that a couple times this week and absolutely awesome. All right, as far as rain chances go, the best chance of rain this entire three-day stretch of the weekend will be on Father's Day, unfortunately, with scattered showers and storms. It's also warm and muggy. And then storms continue for Monday and Tuesday. Todd, thank you. We are back in 25 minutes and throughout Good Morning America with news, weather, and traffic updates. All your news throughout the day can be found on the RTV6 app. We hope you have a great Friday and a happy Father's Day weekend.